All right, guys, what we got now is a pool liner replacement project here I'm doing. Um, we had this pool installed in 2011 or 12. So this liner is going on 10 or 11 years. And there's one patch like right there. Uh, that was, I'm gonna say three days in, we had some of the, the flip scuba feet that you put on and one of the kids got too close to it and it put a, a nick in it, kind of gashed it out. So it had a leak that went down the pool wall around the track and it must have settled over there because if you go down in, under the water, you can feel the pool track that's exposed and it's been exposed since that. Um, it's never sank, drop, nothing. It's it's holding up good, but it did move the sand down in there. But I'm really pleased that this liner has lasted as long as it did with, with no other issue. There was a, a hole there that was patched, and then down there, one year I took the cover off to open it up, and there was a little plant growing up right through the liner. So I got down in there and took the roots out of it and, and sealed it, and haven't had a problem. You can see how badly faded this liner is. I mean, it is it is really took a beating. Um, everything with it has has held up good. I've replaced the pump one time. That was one and a half horse Howard pump. Uh, the pool is a 21 foot round harmony it's a true round pool everything on this pool is resin except the steel walls the track that goes around is resin the uprights the caps are all resin so there's there's no steel track to rust out around this pool it's, I'm really happy with how it's held up. Um, just a couple of notes on uh, the install. When it rains real, real good, we might get some water that comes down this hill, but nothing that ever puddles here. But just to be safe, I put some three inch uh, corrugated pipe in here. That way, if it did, it doesn't puddle here and cause a problem that it can actually come out here and drain out here and not ever get this pool to a threat of collapse or sinking or anything on there. Um, when I close the pool down, I drain the water just below the skimmer mouth. Put this cap in there, throw the cover on it, and then I put onto my pool pump Where the pull pump goes into here, I sat this pump in here and this stays like this with that trash can over it to protect the water from hitting that pump. And then I have an end on this because you'll get these little seeds off of the, the maple trees. This goes onto the end of the pipe that I made. Try to clean that out a couple times goes on the end of this hard pipe, sits on top of the cover, and then I have my Z-Wave stuff hooked up so whenever there's water that's starting to fill up on top of the liner, it pushes the weight of the water down, goes into the skimmer, drips out of here. Now some people don't take theirs down that far and they put some kind of bobber or something in here. I don't trust that this isn't gonna crack over time. So I like to take it down below the skimmer we got three pumps working to pump this out. It might be halfway, a little over half, and the pump's been running for maybe two hours. So I've got a submersible down there. I got this as a backup pump for the water on top, and then this as another pump for the water on top. So I got two of those running, and then the submersible in there, so we should have it hopefully drained out within the next 
12 to 24 hours if anything. It's supposed to be 85 all week. Best time to put in a pool liner, the hotter the better. You just unravel it out there in the yard, let the sun get to it, it'll stretch in a lot better. Uh, this is going to be, I'm not sure if I actually want to continue with, um, a, this is a, a beaded, it's a beaded liner. It's got the track in here and then bead goes in around it. The liner I got is a universal liner, so I can take these caps off, take the bead track out, and then I can put the hook, J-hook type on it, snap the rails on it, put these back on. I think it's warm enough and hot enough out here that it'll stretch enough that I may not even have to take these caps off. Might be able to leave these on and pull that new liner and get it down in this track, but we'll see when we get there. Right now we want to get it drained. The only thing that concerns me is right here there's a spot where the, uh, the beaded track seems to be giving way and the liner starts to be pulling through so I'll do an inspection on that and see I think uh, the J hook type in my opinion is the best it's a little more work because you got to take the top caps off usually to get that in and when you take these top caps off your pool can start to to move pretty good if, if it's windy but there's no wind today hopefully there's no wind for the next couple days and i don't get a tremendous amount of wind that usually hits this pool because you got the fence here you got like a closed off there so there's not a lot of wind travel plus the house so there's not a you know any any great force of wind that's on here but once we get the water drained out we'll come back we'll show us cutting out the liner putting the new liner in, moving the sand around, putting the new liner in, getting it ready to go for hopefully another 10 seasons. All right, so we got the liner out, got it drained. It took right at 12 hours. We started at 2 p.m. and about 2 a.m. it had finished up. Um, a couple things to point out. They seem to have done a real good job when they put the sand down originally. Um, it was really level. It was over here where all the water kind of ran to, uh, but it wasn't too much, so. Uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to retape the seam with duct tape. I'm going to retape that. Um, my inspection is like look at the the track that you see that's exposed. That's the resin track that should not be exposed. And you can see going around the the cove here, you got a lot of track that's exposed. The cove it didn't look like was too much of a cove. You should have a good six, six, seven inch cove. That's like nice and smooth. So you have to worry about your track sticking out. Looking for rust, any holes. I see a little bit of residual rust, but nothing that's nothing terrible. No rust around the returns. The skimmer mouth looks good. There's no rust on there. The track looks good. The bead track, it looks good all the way around. So the section over here where it started to fall down was right around here. And it looks like some of the sand was removed. This I thought was one of the bricks from the upright, but I'm not feeling a brick that's there, but we'll get that all coved back up. I should not have to remove this cap to put the liner in. I should be able to get that liner to sit down in there pretty good. There's plenty of room up in here to get it worked around and get it in there. It might take a little longer, but usually with beaded, you don't need to remove these caps. 
uh, overlap or J-hook you do because they actually sit on top of the pool wall or lap over the pool wall. So we'll get this cove taken care of. We'll get all these divots and stuff out of here. And we'll set the liner out in here and let it start warming up a little bit and start getting some water in it. All right, so we got we got the cove rebuilt around the edges. It's enough that the track isn't showing, plus a couple of inches, so that that should be plenty. Um, I put down some granule ant killer. This will help keep any uh, carpenter ants or anything, any any type of ant from trying to get up inside of the the pool. They usually come in; they're going to come under the pool wall, not not so much in the center. I uh, had to get another gasket. I took it off of the the skimmer, and the bottom half was kind of cracked up a little bit, so we got a replacement gasket on that that doesn't need to go in until after we get the liner in and start getting some water in it i got the vac hose in so now what i'll do is i'll put the liner here unroll it get it tucked in turn the shot back on duct tape off the access openings turn the shot back on and let it start sucking the liner in All right, so we got the new liner in, got the water going in, got the wrinkles pulled out of it. This is the hose from the shop vac that's down in there. Sucked all the air around, pulled it real tight. Then you just walk around and make sure your liner's tucked down in there and the track good enough. And the seam is over here. You don't want the seam 
anywhere near the skimmer and stuff that you need to cut in the seam in there so the liner the beaded part that i cut off it was way ridiculous because i had to use a pair of scissors and cut it off all the way around that little snip and it peel it didn't work that way it it just did not want to come off so i had to literally cut it all the way around the pool it just goes up and when there's nothing in the pool you can roll this up there's still a lot of a lot of play give that's in it and you could just snap it down didn't need to take the track off went in great I think it's uh, secure in there the shop backs got it sucked up against the wall real good now this you can see is a little bit spongy but not much the water and it'll pull that tight against it it's got a good cove another reason why you want to do this when it's really really hot out it stretches real easy if it was 45 50 degrees that would just rip and probably bust all along that seam line if it's too cold so make sure your temperatures preferably I would say probably 80 or more just to be sure I'm kind of walking around now and trying to feel if there's any heel prints or divots or anything like that that might later cause somebody to step on it and maybe poke a hole in it I believe this is a 0.25 mil liner so it's pretty durable pretty standard sits in the track real nice the track was in good shape I had no issues with the track so if you have an overlap liner I would go with the beaded it I mean it literally took me probably 10 minutes to snap this in all the way around where an overlap you got to take the caps off throw the liner over the wall and then put the snaps on top then put the caps back in a little bit more work but beaded is really a plug and play so we see the water over here as before it's starting to fill in here nothing here yet some water here it's starting so it is 3:45 p.m. I am guessing it's probably going to take about 18 hours to fill this. It's about 10,200, 10,300 gallon. All right, guys. So I got a interesting discovery to share with you. Um, I called to get a couple of parts on the replacement parts for the cap here and for as long as we've had this pool 10 years or so we have always thought that it was 21 round harmony that pull true round it's not octagon it's true round pull and that's what they wrote on it when I when I purchased it so this is what I was under the assumption that I had but when you actually look at the pool in here it's not quite it's not quite the same pool so this is not a harmony the liner I ordered was the 21 by 54 21 round by 54 on the on the wall so once I got a hold of the parts company I needed that part right there one of the inner caps from where the clip had busted off that's when we discovered that this wasn't the pull that I thought it was so he sent me this I believe that's pronounced um, 
Articla? I don't know, but that's the pool. That actually looks, as far as the caps on the end, that is identical to that cap. So this is the actual pool that I have. So what made that, what made me freak out was this pool is a 21 by 52, not a 21 by 54. So this liner is two inches taller than it should be. But when I put the liner in, down in the, the cove where it goes to the ground, I could put my hand in there on the liner and push the liner down to the ground. So it stretched in. There's no air pockets that are here. There's no bubble. It's intact in the track all the way around. So I don't think I'm going to have an issue. I'm this far up. I put the skimmer and the return in today. So moment of truth now within the next hour to find out if we're 100% or not, whether or not those two items leak. And I'll explain what I did on those two. So even though this one cap is busted and I think I have another cap that these little fins here are broke off on. These have got grooves right there and they slide right in there. That clips in. This also clips in pretty tight, so I'm not not sure if I'm going to actually need a replacement or not. Because it stays on there pretty good. So let me grab the gasket. Okay, so I saw two different ways of doing this. Neither, each way, everybody was really certain that that was the right way. There was no directions with it. I researched what I could. This is what is called a butterfly gasket. It's supposed to be the newer type. And basically, when you got your liner up there, you've got your pull cut out, and you just sit, seat this in there all the way around, line up your holes, put the screws through your face plate, through there, and screw it in. So you've got a gasket that's between your wall and your liner on one end and then this other end is between the outside wall and your skimmer and they said to make sure you could see the gasket underneath good enough that it stuck out and you shouldn't have a leak problem you you should be okay so we'll see when it gets up to that level now some people were saying that you go ahead and cut the liner and then you put the liner and the pool wall in between here when it sits down. They were just as adamant that way as they was the way that I did it. So when I took it off, the liner was not in there. When I took it off, the liner was right up against that with the face plate and the screws in it. So there was absolutely no rust on that opening no rust on this opening which this was also interesting 
the way this was installed. The way this was put in was inside you got an o-ring, a rubber o-ring. Then you've got another rubber o-ring outside. Then you get a, a composite or a fiber and then the nut. So the liner is right up against the pool wall on the inside. There is nothing between the liner and the pool wall. And again, there was two different ways of doing that. That's the way I took it off. There was no rust on it. I put some new Teflon tape here and then screwed this 90 degree back inside that. Screwed that nut on, hooked up the pump and everything. So I guess if it never leaked before, should be in good shape. I don't really see how you could ever install a skimmer and not cut the liner after the skimmer is put in. I, I, and I'm not sure I trust that, but some of the old school gaskets, it's actually two gaskets, one on the inside, one on the outside. And then some people use three gaskets. They put one on the outside, then they put the skimmer up. Then they put one between the liner and the pool wall, and then they put another one between the liner and the skimmer mouth plate, which I, I think was probably overkill, because I the way I took it off is exactly the way that I put it back. I did replace the gasket because that was just old. So looking at the water level on the border line, it's pretty much even all the way around there. So the pool was installed completely level and the water is going to be level regardless of whether the pool is or not. If the pool's crooked, the water is still going to be level. So that, that tells me that the liner is, is uh, stretched in, it's even, and, and it did stretch. I mean, it, it stretched in good even though it was uh, allegedly two inches smaller or two inches taller than what the pool was. So this pool was 52, the liner was a 54, but I, I think it'll be fine. So we'll check back here in an hour. Once we get the pump primed and get it up and running, make sure there's no leaks around the skimmer and the return. And then we'll get the ladder in. We should be good to go for the season. We'll run the pump for about four hours and we'll take a water sample. Watch this is uh, city water going in. Our pH isn't too bad. Our phosphates aren't terrible. Uh, the last time I filled this up, I think I just needed to add chlorine and a little pH plus and it was fine. And I had the same water in this pool for the entire time we had it, uh, about 10 years and we treated it. There's the day I came out and it looked like the biggest cup of green tea. It was all green. There was build up on the walls like a slimy residue the floor was slippery that was from going to the wrong pole place and letting them test the water with test strips and, and no other tests uh, phosphates I never looked at for the longest time and that's what it ended up being my phosphates was so high it was just eating the chlorine I mean I could put in three pounds of chlorine six tabs the next day no chlorine so your phosphates will absolutely eat out any chlorine that you stick in it so I got test strips from phosphate which is better than none well not test strips there's a little pack you put into a bottle and then you shake it up and then you put it next to the chert and if it has any blue tint to it then you have phosphates if it's uh, relatively clear you don't have phosphates and you can't just look at the water and tell so we'll check back in an hour and see if we got any leaks all right folks so I think we're about a hundred percent a little bit a little bit more to go there I like to run my water up to the third bolt on the skimmer liners in uh, no air pocket pumps up and running I'm running about 18 pounds of pressure so far no leaks under the skimmer dry all the way around it 
I use these uh, socks also, at least for the first month. There is a uh, that tree right there. It has these little white almost like some type of almost like a cotton that comes off of it every year get sucked into the air unit have to come out this will get real bad I'll have to spray it out with the hose usually all through May in the first couple weeks of June then they go away real annoying so they keep an eye on it so it doesn't clog up the skimmer or clog up the uh, air unit got the ladder in took the temperature it's uh, about 67 68 degrees so I'll let this circulate for about an hour I'll get me a water sample to run some test on get my solar cover on it let the pump circulate usually for two days make sure the water stays running circulates it real good we should get the temperature up if it stays 80 plus like it has been for the last four days I mean the kids will jump in there now but I won't get in there if it's any less than about 80 degrees so should be ready for a a new season with our new liner and it looks a lot better than the last one thanks for watching like share subscribe